This video is brought to you by SolderWell. Leaders in aluminum coil repair, training and products, helping the HVAC industry like no one else. Let SolderWell help you get the job done. Whether you're joining aluminum to aluminum, copper to copper, or even dissimilar metals, visit www.solderweld.us. See for yourself. SolderWell. All right, stop, stop. <sighs> okay, so if you see the HVAC Chronicles in the title of one of my videos, generally what that's going to mean is I'm focusing more on entertainment value versus like a tutorial, tool review, something like that. A filter change and a once over on a 30 year old rooftop unit on a strip mall for a mattress store. That just wasn't cutting it no matter how hard I tried to edit that in a cool way. This week was tough. I didn't have a lot to shoot. So as far as making something simple seem entertaining, kind of dropped the ball. Well, I, I did set a dip switch on a VRF unit earlier this week. Yeah, let's go ahead and try to make setting a dip switch look cool. All right, I know that was a little bit of a stretch as far as making the mundane look epic, but hopefully I came closer to hitting the mark there. In all seriousness though, VRF equipment is probably my favorite equipment to deal with in the industry. Just a personal opinion, I find the equipment very exciting. I enjoy the rush that I get from starting up and commissioning a new system and seeing all the indoor units for multiple systems populate in one central controller or my laptop service checker that kind of thing and then having the ability to control it all from that interface and operate the equipment in heating or cooling simultaneously regardless of the mode that the outdoor unit is in it's cool stuff and i think um, it's going to become much more prevalent in the future in the United States. It needs no introduction worldwide. It's been the dominant method of cooling and heating for the international community for about 35 years now. The inverter technology is also a big part of all that. And I think whether it's VRF or not, I think inverter driven motors and loads are going to be the way of the future no matter what the application is so it's good to have an understanding now of what that type of equipment does and how it operates i do have a little clip of me kind of going over one of those outdoor units and how that flow is from line voltage entering that outdoor unit to ultimately controlling that compressor at a varied frequency that matches the load conditions precisely 
that's what makes these machines so efficient. So anyways, let's get back up onto that roof and I'll do a little quick walkthrough on one of those outdoor units on the inverter section and maybe it'll make the whole picture look a little bit more simpler once it's broken down into simpler terms. Power off here for a minute so I thought while I, it's a little quiet, show y'all real quick how this inverter driven equipment kind of runs. For those of you that are not familiar with inverter technology, these compressors operate on a variable frequency. Well, one does. This is the generation one equipment for York Hitachi and they have a inverter run compressor as well as a fixed speed. So your fixed speed will just run off a traditional contactor. But for your inverter section here, you can see our three phase, in this case it's 208, runs in, it runs through a giant noise filter, cleans up the signal a little bit, and it runs behind. This is the main the main brain printed circuit board, PCB1, power runs behind, it runs through another disconnect, and here's your diode bridge, diode module, and this is where the three phase 208 is going to come out, it's going to be a DC signal. So it's going to be really rough though, you know, it's a rough sine wave, so it's going to run through this large capacitor and it's also going to flow to the contactor here for the inverter compressor. And when we do get a signal that pulls the contactor in, it'll run through this. This is a load side reactor. It looks like a transformer. It's not. It's a reactor. It also cleans up noise. It kind of shaves off the the excessive peaks of the sine wave and it prevents from you know having too um, confusing of a signal that can actually cause excessive heat for the compressor and so this ultimately keeps the compressor a little cooler and it also you know therefore helps uh, prolong bearing life somewhat from the reactor it's going to run down to our actual inverter board here for the compressor so you can see our UVW leads those are our one, two, and three that actually go directly to the compressor. That brown or that tan, that's actually the IGBTs or the insulated gate bipolar transistors. Those are the actual components that fire and close. So they got a little gate on them and they open and close rapidly in order to produce the frequency that the equipment actually wants the compressor to run at. So when it's getting those inputs, from our, again, our brain. The PCB here is where all our inputs, outputs come from, all the indoor equipment and all of our thermistors and sensors, all of it. So this is gonna make the determination of the capacity we need. And ultimately it's going to convey that information here, which will result in our regulated voltage to the compressor. So guys, for the fan, these fans are also inverter driven. There's the fan board there. It's essentially taking everything that was on, all the components that went into getting the compressor to run, and it's gonna do it all right there on that board. So you can see the big capacitor. It also has a small diode bridge and IGBTs all on that board. And then you have your UVW, your outputs right here that go right to the, uh, the fan motor. But it's a one-stop shop for the fan because it gets their inputs right here and they're directly tied off the noise filter. And that's really the extent of the footage I got from that job. It was a good week and a good job, just not a lot of opportunity to film. That said, keep an eye out in the next few weeks. I got a couple good reviews coming out. Uh, I got a new bag. Really excited about that. It looks like a pretty awesome innovation from Vito. And I also got a couple good tools from Amp Probe to review. So we've got the AT6000 series tracing system. We've got the IRC110 thermal imaging camera and the PRM6, which is a phasing and sequence tester for motors. And of course, our great friends at SolderWeld, I haven't forgotten them by any means. I've got some good videos coming out with some crazy demos of some of these products. Next up of which will be the Hot Block Heat Absorption Compound. This stuff is insane and I'm gonna prove it coming soon. And with that guys, I've had a great week. I hope you did too. Enjoy your weekend, stay safe. We'll see you on the next one.